He is crazy. He is old. But is he a coot? It's time for the crazy old coot. Power Color presents the Red Dragon. Radeon RX Vega 56 Showdown. In this corner, the Challenger Icy Blue with its R5 2400G clocked at 4.0 gigahertz on a Asus Tough B450M Plus gaming motherboard. Sporting DDR4-2933, powered by Cooler Master 500 Watt Bronze 80 Plus Power Supply. Icy Blue, the Challenger. In this corner, the reigning champ, the Beast, with its R5-2600 X clock between 4 to 4.2 gigahertz on a Gigabyte X470 Aurorus Gaming 7 motherboard with DDR4-3400 memory powered by an EVGA 650 watt Gold 80 plus power supply. The champ, the beast. The referee has come out. He's inspecting both fighters, making sure there are no hidden objects. Okay, fighters, we want a good, clean fight. No hitting below the belt, or headbutting, or overclocking the GPU. Now get back to your corners and be ready to start the fight. Begin round one. Time spy. And the challenger comes out swinging. A left, a right. Oh my God. He scored 6,527 for a graphic score. But wait, the champ, the champ. He's come back. He's hit left. He's hit right. And he's scored... A 6,654 for a narrow 2% win. Begin round two. Fire strike. The challenger comes out swinging again. There's a left. There's a right. But the champ's blocking him. He blocks him again. Oh, oh, oh stomach punch. But the champ isn't even flinching. The challenger's score is 20,780. But the champ. He's hitting him hard. Oh, there's a head shot. He drops him down. But the challenger scrambles back up. And the champ score is 21,379 for a 3% victory. Begin round three. Rise of the Tomb Raider. The challenger comes out not as quick as before. He's dancing around trying to avoid the champ. He, oh, a quick jab there. Oh, another quick jab. A failed uppercut. And the challenger's score was 121.2. But the champ is swinging. Oh, he's knocked him hard. The challenger's falling by back to the ropes. He's trying to play rope dope as the champ pounds him. The champ score, 129.1 for a 6.5% win. Begin round four. World of Tanks Encore. The challenger, he's, he's staggering out, but he knows he's got to get a knockout. And he's flailing at the champ, but the champ is just blocking him. And the challenger's score is 21,844. But the champ, he's counterpunching. Oh no, a blow to the head. The challenger is down. The champ's score is 23,019. For a 5.3% victory. Long live the champ. 
Okay, enough fooling around. I mean, we all knew that there's no way the Beast was going to lose to Icy Blue. Just look at the the price, the parts for, the main parts for the Beast, $717. The main parts for Icy Blue, 370 Nearly double. In fact, the price difference between Icy Blue and the Beast is almost the price of a Vega 56. Just think about that. Now, now let's go get into the performance. The performance between the Beast and Icy Blue. Time Spy was only 2%. Fire Strike, Heaven, 3%. I know Heaven wasn't in the fun part of the video, but it was getting a little long and I wanted to cut it short. Rise of the Tomb Raider, 6.5%. World of Tanks Encore, 5.3%. It is amazing. The 2400G kept pace. And think about Icy Blue has only 8 gigabytes of memory timed at 2933. The Beast's memory is timed at 3400. And it's 16 gigabytes. That in itself is a big factor in the differences. Icy Blue has a B450 motherboard. The Beast has a X470 motherboard. Icy Blue only had a 500 watt power supply. Bronze. The Beast has a 650 watt gold power supply. That difference is is minuscule when you factor in those factors. So the question is, is for a gaming PC, a purely gaming PC, the 2400G holds its own, which was what I was saying all along. This is what I wanted to prove. You put a high-end card in with a 2400G, you're not going to lose that much performance. And it's a shitload cheaper. So here are my final thoughts. If you are building a budget PC on a limited budget and you need to defer on your graphics card because of you got to wait until you can save up more money to buy your graphics card, the 2400G is a great option because its graphics unit is powerful enough to play a lot of games a bit on low quality and low resolution, but it can do it. And then once you've saved up your money, the 2400G is a powerful enough CPU that it can drive a GTX 1070 or an RX Vega 56. And obviously anything lower than those. Everybody is different. Your situations are different. I'm not saying everybody should go out and buy a 2400G. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if the situation fits you, the 2400G will not let you down. And this is your crazy old coot wishing you a good evening.